Scholastics, The Magic School Bus, Gets Eden, a book about food chains. Watch Scholastics, The Magic School Bus TV show on PBS, a Scholastic Incorporated book based on the Magic School Bus books written by Joanna Cole and illustrated by Bruce Egan. TV tie-in adaptation by Patricia Ralph and illustrated by Carolyn Bracken. TV script written by John May and Jocelyn Stevenson. Voices and narration by Speaky Geeky and Geeky Juniors, Mr. Geeky. It was field trip day for our class and a field trip with our teacher, Ms. Frizzle, is always, well, inexperienced. We were going to the beach. Ms. Frizzle had asked us to work in teams of two and to bring in beach things that go together. Who is your partner? Phoebe brought dune grass and Ralphie brought a yellow balloon. It's the sun, he said. The sun makes the grass grow. Wanda brought a mussel and Tim brought a rock for it to live on. But Keisha had forgotten about the beach things. Oh no, oh bad, oh bad, bad, moaned Keisha. All I brought was my beach towel and a tuna fish sandwich for lunch. Uh-oh. Just then, Arnold walked in. His shoes squeaked when he walked. Arnold, my dear partner, said Keisha. Did you by any chance bring two beach things that go together? Arnold groaned. Arg! I forgot too, he said. I was in such a hurry this morning that I ran all the way here and kind of stepped in the pond by our house. I didn't have time to change, so all I have is my bathing suit and a towel. And the green slime on your shoes. Keisha and Arnold felt terrible. How can we do a report? Said Arnold. Keisha looked at her tuna fish sandwich. We'll just have to work with what we have, she said. She looked at the green scum on Arnold's shoes. There must be a way for a tuna sandwich and green scum to go together. Think. Good luck. Good morning, class, Miss Frizzle said. Today is beach day. Let's hear some of your beach reports. She looked around the room. Keisha and Arnold tried to look small. Keisha and Arnold, Ms. Frizzle said brightly. Tell us about your two beach things that go together. Uh-oh. Keisha stood up. Well, Arnold and I brought this nutritious tuna fish sandwich and... Keisha gulped. She grabbed Arnold's slimy shoe and this delightful green scum. We all held our breaths, waiting to see what the Frizz would say. Ms. Frizzle smiled. Fantastic! She said, please go on. Tell us why a tuna sandwich and a green scum belong. A loud beep interrupted Miss Frizzle. Sorry, hold that thought. It's time for our field trip. Saved by the beep. I never thought I'd be glad to go on a field trip. We all piled onto the magic school bus and fastened our seatbelts. Off we go, said Miss Frizzle. Oh, I do like to be beside the seaside. I hope you all brought your bathing suits. The Frizz smiled. The best way to learn about something is to jump right in, she said. So hold on tightly, class. Does that mean what I think it means? Asked Arnold. I was afraid of this. Suddenly, the bus lurched toward the ocean. Cool! It flopped, it flipped, and then it jumped up and into the water, just like a dolphin. <laughs> Diving through the water, we could see seaweed all around us. What are all those beautiful spiny rocks? asked Tim. They're animals, sea urchins, answered the frizz. They eat seaweed. As we watched, a sea otter swam by and grabbed one of the sea urchins. And I guess otters eat the sea urchins, said Ralphie. Do you think they otter? We never swam in green scum in my old school. Otters eat urchins. Urchins eat seaweed, said Miss Frizzle. See the connections? I can't see anything through this green stuff said Keisha. It's all scummy out there. Did you say scummy? Arnold asked. That's it. Look, Keisha, scum. Ms. Frizzle looked pleased. Shall we take a closer look? She asked. Ms. Frizzle pressed a button and suddenly we were shrinking. There we go, she said. We are now as tiny as the green phytoplankton. That's seriously tiny, whispered Tim. Class, Please put on the specially designed underwater breathing mask that you will find under your seats. Then off we go. Remember, look for connections, said the Frizz as she opened the door of the bus. According to my research, phytoplankton 
live in the part of the ocean near the surface that gets sunlight, explained Dorothy Ann. And I thought stepping in this stuff was bad. Look at me, said Dorothy Ann, as she rode on one of the phytoplankton. Just then, a much bigger creature floated by and ate the phytoplankton out from under her. <laughs> Yikes, she yelled. Look out, everyone. We're the right size to be somebody's food. Help. Just in time, the magic school bus swam by and grabbed us in a net. All aboard, called Miss Frizzle. As I always say, it's better to be in the bus than in someone else. Quick, let's get big, begged Arnold. No sooner said than done, answered Miss Frizzle. And with a spin and a whoosh, we grew to the size of the thing that had just tried to eat us. Miss Frizzle said, it is called zooplankton. Phew, we're safe, said Arnold. We looked out at the strange creatures floating around us. Look at these guys, said Carlos. They're not guys. There's zooplankton, said Wanda. But what is that huge thing? She asked, pointing to a fish that looked enormous to us. That is an anchovy, Wanda, said Miss Frizzle. Ralphie shuddered. His dad ate salty anchovies on pizza. Now that yucky fish wanted to eat him. Could we get a little bigger, please? Miss Frizzle pressed a yellow button, and we felt ourselves growing again. In a few seconds, we were as big as the anchovies, Miss Frizzle said. I suggest we stay on the bus while we have our lunch. Keisha took out her tuna sandwich. Don't eat our report, said Arnold. Here, have a potato chip. Keisha looked at her sandwich. I still don't get it. How is this sandwich connected with your scum, Arnold? She asked. Arnold shrugged. Tuna fish is just tuna fish, he said. Keisha looked amazed. Brilliant, Arnold, she said. Get it? It's like a chain. The scum is phytoplankton. Phytoplankton are eaten by zooplankton. Zooplankton are eaten by anchovies. And anchovies are eaten by bigger fish, like tuna, yelled Arnold, looking out the window. Suddenly, everything went dark. The bus bounced against something and came to a stop. Where are we? Someone yelled. Ms. Frizzle turned on the lights. Plus, she announced, we are now inside an albacore tuna. Keisha was excited. This is great, Arnold, she said. Now we know how your green scum is connected to my sandwich. Keisha raised her hand. Ms. Frizzle, she called. May we go back to school now? Arnold and I are ready to give our report. Ms. Frizzle smiled. Certainly. Hold still, everyone. Here comes our chance. In my old school, we weren't allowed to be tuna chow. At last, we could see daylight. The bus was in the tuna's mouth, and the tuna's mouth was headed for a fish hook. Seat belts, please, called Miss Frizzle, and she pulled a lever. A clamp shot out from the magic school bus and fastened us onto the fish hook. We were caught. We flew through the air as someone reeled us in. Yikes, I can't look. A huge face peered at us as we dangled from the fishing line. Another school bus, the fisherwoman said thoughtfully. Second one today, back it goes. She unhooked the bus and tossed us back into the ocean. We're a keeper, yelled Arnold, but it was too late. The bus landed back in the water with a splash. Never fear, Arnold, said the frizz as she pressed another button on the dashboard. When in the surf. Do as the surfers do, Ms. Frizzle yelled over the sound of the waves, and before we knew it, we were surfing back to shore on the back of the magic school bus. This is what I call water power. Back at school, Arnold and Keisha finally gave their report. It's like a chain with everything connected, said Arnold. Tiny plants, like the scum on my shoe, are eaten by zooplankton. The zooplankton are eaten by anchovies. And the anchovies are eaten by tuna, continued Keisha. And last of all, the tuna fish is eaten by me. I guess that puts me at the top of this food chain. And am I ever hungry? Just think, a shoe covered in plants. Excellent report on an ocean food chain, exclaimed Ms. Frizzle. What about a land food chain? Well, a mouse eats grass seed, said Tim. Then a snake might eat the mouse. And a hawk eats the snake, finished Wanda. The hawk is at the top of that food chain. Cool. Correct, said Ms. Frizzle as she drew on the board. And plants are at the bottom of almost every food chain. It was time to go home. Arnold put on his scummy shoe. Nature amazes me, he said. So does Miss Frizzle, said Keisha. And we all laughed, even Ms. Frizzle. Dear Editor, as a writer for Fish Time magazine, I want to inform you that tuna fish do not eat people or buses. They eat small fish, such as anchovies. Fondly, in the swim. Dear editor, my school bus cannot turn into a dolphin or anchovy or zooplankton. Our bus has trouble just turning onto our street. Signed, 
the bus stops here. Dear editor, please let Arnold know that it is important to do homework on time, to remember to take it to school with you, and to keep your sneakers clean at all times. From Tie Your Shoes. A note to teachers and parents. When the magic school bus is eaten by a tuna, it becomes part of a food chain. A series of living things dependent upon one another for food. Plants, which create food using energy from the sun, are at the bottom of almost every food chain. Herbivores eat plants, and carnivores eat herbivores. Humans are at the top of many food chains. Encourage children to think about the food chains to which they belong and about all living things depend on one another. Ms. Frizzle. It's beach day, and the whole class is excited. Everyone, except Arnold and Keisha, that is, they forgot the report on two beach things that go together. All Arnold and Keisha have is a tuna fish sandwich and some smelly green pond scum. What could those two things possibly have in common? The best way to learn about something is to jump right in, Ms. Frizzle announces a second later. The magic school bus dives right into the ocean. Come on an underwater adventure and learn about food chains. Thanks for listening to our story. Don't forget, to visit Geeky Jr. for more of the stories that you love. Ask a parent or guardian if you can subscribe to Geeky Jr. today.